Previously on Jimmy Kimmel Live. From Hollywood, it's Jimmy Kimmel Live. Tonight, Bill Burr, Lily Gladstone, and music from Joshua Ray Walker with Cleto and the Cletons. And now, Jimmy Kimmel. Thanks for joining us here in uh, Hollywood. You know, this is the time of the year when the uh, when lists are made, accolades are handed out. We say, what's the top this and the top that? Tomorrow, Time Magazine is going to name uh, the person of the year, which is a distinction that dates all the way back to 1927. First person of the year, which back then was called man of the year, was Charles Lindbergh, who I think, I don't know, sailed over on uh, the Nina Pinta in Santa Maria or something like that, but it, it's a big deal. And the person of the year isn't necessarily even a person. It can be a movement, it can be a thing, but times whatever of the year doesn't have quite the same ring to it. So they go with person. <laughs> they put out a list of the top nine finalists. And I really hope, for their sake, I hope they make the right choice, because if they don't, Time Headquarters tomorrow is about to get stormed by an angry group of Swifties who will be physically... <laughs> and psychologically unable to shake this off. <laughs> Taylor Swift is one of the nine finalists. Vladimir Putin is one of the nine finalists. And so is Barbie, the doll. <laughs> Just insulting the humans, kind of, but Putin and Barbie actually have a lot more in common than you would think. They both live in mansions. They both love horses. <laughs> they both dabble in the martial arts. They love to play dress up. You can see they wear many of the same outfits. <laughs> I mean, Putin is basically a ruthless dictator Barbie. He, uh, <laughs> artist formerly known as Prince Charles is a finalist, which is not a big deal for him. He's been on the cover of Time a lot. This time he was on in 1978, looking like the guy the intern shouldn't get drunk around at the office holiday party. <laughs> <laughs> also in the running is Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell, which um, it seems like let him win if the idea is you don't want to sell too many magazines. Like, <laughs> You know, we only printed up so many copies, and maybe save him for the swimsuit issue or something. <laughs> Today is also release day for Liz Cheney's tell-all, Oath and Honor, which is being billed as a memoir and a warning. The warning is that another four years of Trump will lead to another four years of annoying books about Trump. Ch Cheney really goes after Trump. Usually, the only women who hate him this much were married to him, but she... <laughs> She says her fellow Republicans in the House referred to Trump regularly as Orange Jesus, or OJ, for short. <laughs> and I guess she has an audience because Oath and Honor is the number one bestseller on Amazon. It's narrowly edging out, and I did not make this up, the number two bestseller on Amazon right now is Snoop Dogg's Cookbook <laughs> from 2018. <laughs> this is a five-year-old book. How is that possible? The busiest shopping week of the year, a five-year-old book about tater tots is number two? <laughs> How stoned are these people? <laughs> anyway, Liz Cheney takes an, uh, aim at a number of her fellow Republicans, including the new Speaker of the House, Mike Johnson, who, you know, Mike Johnson worked very hard behind the scenes to facilitate Trump's claims that the election was rigged, and he's still at it this morning as part of an ongoing effort now to pretend the insurrection was no big deal. Johnson announced they'll be releasing thousands of hours of footage of the friendly neighborhood riot on the Capitol. The release of the January 6th tapes is a critical and important uh, exercise. We want transparency. We should demand that the American people do. We trust, House Republicans trust the American people to draw their own conclusions. Oh, yeah, you can definitely trust us to draw our own conclusions. <laughs> hey, maybe the American people will say, oh, now I get it, Mike Pence should have been hung. We should not, they should not be dictated by some narrative and accept that as fact. So they can review the tapes themselves. Uh, we're going through a methodical process of releasing them as quickly as we can. As you know, we have to blur some of the faces of persons who uh, participated in, in, uh, in the events of that day because we don't want them to be retaliated against and, uh, and, and, and to be charged by the DOJ. Exactly. We want transparency. So we're going to blur out all the faces of the people. <laughs> 
who were there. These people weren't trying to hurt anybody. Ted Cruz is only hiding in the supply closet because he loved the smell of a mop. <laughs> the last thing we want to do is send the message that Americans can't try to overthrow their government anymore. We have to protect them from the law enforcement we work so hard to pretend to support. <laughs> Meanwhile, you know 23andMe, uh, the DNA service that lets you find out how many times your father cheated on your mother? Um, <laughs> well, they had a security breach. Hackers broke into the site and got access to nearly 7 million accounts. And now they have all our DNA. You'd think a company that could tell me how Polish my grandmother was by studying the loogie I sent them in the mail would be more sophisticated. <laughs> have you seen the trailer for the new Grand Theft Auto uh, game? It's very realistic. And it's the first new Grand Theft Auto in, I guess, like a, more than a decade. The last one was pretty realistic, too. So much so that a family in New Jersey had a clever idea. They um, tricked their grandma into thinking Grand Theft Auto was actually the news. <laughs> On the parkway. Some, some On the parkway. No, no. no. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. No. <laughs> no way. On the parkway. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh. How good is that? I mean, that's... <laughs> that's... Well, Bun, that's... That's one way to get Nana to give up driving. <laughs> the new number one song in the United States, according to the Billboard Hot 100, is 65 years old, Rockin' Around the Christmas Tree by Brenda Lee, which was released in 1958, is at the top of the charts for the very first time. Brenda Lee was 13 when she recorded this song, which is crazy. A 13-year-old named Brenda. It's insane. <laughs> It's never been number one before, but for whatever reason, it is now. And now Brenda Lee has a number one hit at 78 years old. It's nuts. I mean, between the president, the golden bachelor, and now Brenda Lee, old people are hotter than ever. And young people, I'm worried about. There's a new holiday thing that's happening right now. Kids, instead of writing out a list of what they want for Christmas, are making PowerPoint presentations for their families. Look at this. Here is my Christmas wish list. Wait a minute, what is this something I really want box? It's a reminder. Your stocking stuffers. How expensive is that bracelet? Um, that doesn't matter. Here are more stocking stuffers. Here are more stocking stuffers. If you ask me, like, which Uggs I would want, I would want these ones more than these ones, just so, you, like, you guys know. Thank you. What is this, Shark Tank now that we live in this? Call me old-fashioned, but if you're old enough to make a PowerPoint presentation, you're too old to ask your parents for Uggs. I mean, it's just... Hey, what are you doing? I made a PowerPoint, Jimmy. <laughs> you made a what? PowerPoint! I didn't know you knew how to, uh, how to make PowerPoint. Everybody knows what uh, PowerPoint is, Jimmy. Okay. Yeah, you want you want to see mine? I guess so. Sure. Oh, yeah. All right, here. Look, Jimmy, this is what I want. I want work out gear, Jimmy. You, you <laughs> work out gear. Yeah. Do you are you working out now? I, I'm gonna start, Jimmy. Okay. It's never too late to start. All right. So you want some Hoka sneakers? You want some workout clothes? All right. Well, great. All right. Okay. Then. Hold on. Hold on. I got one more. Okay. All right. And I want a batting cage, Jimmy. For real? Yeah. For my son, I so we can practice baseball. Okay, uh, that's you're gonna, where are you gonna put it? In my backyard. Okay, all right, okay, well, that's, yeah. That's okay, hold, hold on, hold on, one more. Yeah. And I wanna customize water bottle, Jimmy, like with my name and right there say Poppy, too. Okay, all right. <laughs> all right. All right. All right, well, I'll keep that in mind. Okay, hold on, I got one more. Okay. Look, and then I want items for a guest room, Jimmy. Okay. I want a treadmill so I can do exercise. Uh -huh. And then after the exercise, I want a couch so I can lay down right there. Okay. Yeah. All right, well, it's, I'm impressed that you put this all together. Okay, hold on, one more, one more. Yeah. And then I want a computer, Jimmy. For, well, what do you want the computer for? So I can do some work, Jimmy. Oh, what can, and what kind of work exactly would you be doing? Well, send emails. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Watch, watch Netflix. <laughs> okay. And, uh, all right. A lot, a lot of things. All right, all right. I don't know if I'm going to well, get to on, that. Hold on, hold on. Yeah. I got one more. Yeah. And then I want to go on a trip <laughs> to Cancun. Yeah. 
Who is that that's on top of you there? Oh, that's Charlize Theron, Jimmy. Oh, yeah. Charlize Theron? Yeah, of course, I want to go with her. I want to go snorkeling. All everything. right, a vacation with Charlize yeah, Theron. OK, well, we'll ask her if maybe she's interested. All, All right. right. OK, Thank hold on, you. Wait, 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 wait. And then, Jimmy, I work hard, so I want a bottle of Don Julio. You want a $1,000 bottle of Don Julio? Jimmy, you are rich. Don't be a cheap ass. <laughs> Maybe I will get you back. Okay, hold on, one more, one more. Okay, whoa, well, jeez. <laughs> and a monkey. Oh, you can keep him in the batting cage. Yeah, sure. If I agree to buy you the monkey, will you promise not to give it any shots of Don Julio? No, no, I'll, I will take care of it. Okay, very yeah. good. All right. All right. Is that it? That, that's it. Okay, take down the whole right, thing. Will. Yeah, okay, All right. great. All right. All right. Well, I missed the last one. We keep forgetting to, um, to move the elf on the shelf at our house, so as a public service, uh, to parents who are saddled with this thing. Every night, uh, we're gonna give you a, a reminder and a suggestion. So right now, go grab your elf, put it under the mistletoe with um, a Barbie doll or whatever. <laughs> you know, what? Where's that hand? Watch that, pal. He'll put you on the naughty list. You know, we have a beloved holiday tradition at our show. Every year, Guillermo and I dress up like elves, and we sit down with children to find out whether they've been naughty or nice. And tonight, we sat down with a delightful young man named Jackson. Hi there. How are you? Good. I like your outfit. Thank you. It's very Christmassy. Do you, you like our outfits? Yes. Which one of us looks better? Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> Sorry, El Guillermo. Can we have your letter to Santa? Thank you very much. All right. Good handwriting. Dear Santa, I have been good for Christmas. I would like a sensei to give me powers. Ooh, what does that mean? What kind of powers do you want? Life powers. Life powers? <laughs> what if you got in a fight at school? Would you use your powers? No. You would not. They would only be used when? When it's time. When it's time. And when is it time? Whenever it's time. It's time whenever it's time. I wow, like that. I like that. Too big. I like that. It's Remind me of a young Steven Seagal. You know who that is? You would like Ninjago toys. This is all part of your fascination with karate. Yes. Do you know how to do any karate? Yes. And do you like when I say karate instead of karate? Or would you prefer it the other way? The other way. You find it annoying when I say karate? Yeah. OK. Go ahead and do a little bit for us. Oh, that's a good punch. It's a good kick. And that's it? OK. All right, very good. Good job. Have you been naughty or nice this year? Nice. Nice. All the time? Yes. Not done any naughty things? Yes. You have? None. You haven't? Yes. Yes, you haven't? Yes. Yes, you have? None. None what? None bad stuff. None chucks? You've done, have you been good? Yes. Okay, good, okay. Now, I wanna ask you about something that I find um, interesting. What is a butt attack? Um, it's this assembly thing that I do. Can you show us on Elf Guillermo what a butt attack is? So you will kind of move your butt at the person. Yeah. It's, it, um, they laugh when I do it. They laugh when you do it. You do it to be funny. Yeah. If Santa comes down the chimney at your house, will you treat him to a butt attack? No. i never seen um, Santa when it's Christmas. You haven't seen him because you, you go to sleep, right? i only seen him for, like, events. For events? <laughs> what kind of events? Like bar mitzvahs? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. What else do you want for Christmas? Duck. What's that? A duck. You want a duck? Yeah. Like a real duck? Yeah. The f that follows me to school. Oh, oh wow. that would be fun. Well, let me do a little magic. This is how I do magic. What do you see? Duck. Is this the kind of duck you're looking for? Yes. What do you think? Good. You like them? Yeah. 
Anything you want to say to him? I love you, Blue Tuck. Oh, I think he's ready to follow you to school. You want to talk to the duck? Yes. Yeah, go ahead. Hi, duck. I think he likes you, huh? Yeah. Do you want to see if he'll follow you? Yeah. Walk around a little and see if he'll follow you. <laughs> now try the butt attack. <laughs> what do you think? What's he saying? Good job. He's saying good, good job. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I mean, there he is. Are you having second thoughts about this duck idea? Yeah. You are, yeah. <laughs>